I felt like I could start to kind of know my surroundings really by feeling my way around um, on the surface of the earth. Looking at my phone, looking at Google Maps, and becoming aware of the information that was being transmitted to me from above via satellites, kind of orienting us to where we are in our location on the planet, kind of led me to this experience of looking at the ground. And I became aware of the land and the earth as a form of landscape um, in a broader way. For me, looking down and thinking about the surface of the image kind of allowed me to think about the surface of the ground as almost like a portal in a way that could open up another surface underneath. So I went outside and I was gathering rocks and stones and, and pebbles and dirt, um, and I placed them on the, the flatbed scanner. It's very connected to a sense of touch. There's you know, a layer of glass, and whatever is touching that surface is what is going to be in sharp detail in the image. And then the parts of the rocks or stones or dirt that were not touching the surface would not be picked up in that way. They would be out of focus or, or fuzzy. It's sort of this constant unknowing. And it's almost like the closer that we get to something, then maybe the less we know about it. I really like to create a sense of um, the image itself changes as you walk around it. So it, it is kind of in relationship to your body as, as you're seeing it. So if you look at it really from kind of more extreme side angle, um, you can see that the color uh, kind of condenses in a way that makes it a lot more saturated. It definitely does have to do with a kind of physical interaction with the image. Um, I think it's also about wanting to break down the image and have it be more than a static thing. There are a number of them which are bringing together um, parts of images that come from disparate sources. So they're actually cut pieces, fit perfectly together, edge to edge, like a jigsaw puzzle. This idea of glacial erratics you know, when, when the, the plates of the earth were in a different position, leaving evidence of rock formations that sort of don't belong there anymore in our current, our current iteration of this earth. I made the sculptures and I had a lot of pieces left over. And that is ultimately what ended up becoming um, the pieces that are framed on the wall. I designed the pedestals to be in this rhombus shape in kind of keeping with the geometry that these pieces started off with. They are formerly three-dimensional geometric shapes that I flattened in a printmaking press, and, and now they are magnetically held to these magnetite rocks. So none of them were these kind of like organic forms. They started off in, in the sculptures that I made as being these very geometric, hard edge, measured, ruler, cut, um, assembled pieces. And, um, and then they're flattened into these much more like organic, kind of freeform looking shapes. So there are these kind of passages of image that are buried under there. And I feel that that's also true um, for sure in thinking about geology and landforms and the earth as a malleable form as well and how there are these like layers and folds of history and time that are compressed into these objects.